Selling Mr. Excel podcast is sponsored by Easy Excel. Learn Self Mr. Excel podcast episode 1803. Grab the selected record. Hey, welcome back to the Mr. Excel netcast. I'm Bill Jell and today's question sent in by Fred. Can you help me with a formula in the spreadsheet? I created a drop down of model numbers in, in A2 from Sheet 2. And sure enough, he has some data validation set up there that's grabbing the model numbers from uh, Sheet 2. Uh, so we can choose from the list. All right. And then what I'm trying to do is when I select a model, then put that information from the table on Sheet 2 into these various cells. And what he's done is said if A2 is equal to Sheet A3, the first record, the first model, then grab the value from Sheet 2 C3. And this is all working great if we happen to choose the first model in the list. But if we don't choose the first model, if we choose the second model, so in other words, if A2 is equal to uh, A3 on Sheet 2, and then we're getting all falses here. And Fred realized that he's started down a path that would get really, really unwieldy very quickly. He would have to do something like uh, here in the value of false, do another if statement. If A2 is equal to Sheet 2, this time A4, then give me Sheet 2 C4 and so on. You'd have to do this uh, putting like 55 different if statements together, which of course doesn't work. You can't have more than 32. It's just, it's an unwieldy way to go. Okay, all right, so let's use a couple of functions uh, that will help with this. The first thing I want to know is I want to know which row uh, did we select. So we selected an item. What row is that on? And to do that, we're going to use equal match. The match function will look for a value, the selected value, comma, in this column, and I'm going to choose the whole column here. We don't have to choose the whole column, but I am. Um, and comma, and then zero, because we want an exact match. Press Enter, and it says, hey, you chose an item from row three. And let's choose something else. You chose an item from row six. You chose an item from row 11. All right, and so that is going to help in the formulas that follow. All right, I'm going to use the same trick here to figure out which column we want to pull the data in. So these are various columns. Uh, and so here, I'm going to use match again, equal match of voltage, comma, in row 1. This time, I'm going to press the F4 key here, because I'm going to be copying this formula down the sheet, and I want to make sure I always point to row 1. That puts the dollar signs in. See, dollar sign 1, dollar sign 1, comma, 0. And oh, NA, what's up with that voltage? All right, so we see that voltage heading there. I see the voltage heading here. For some reason, it's not seeing a match. I'm going to press F2, and there's no space after the voltage. You can see the flashing insertion point. And come back to sheet one and press F2. Oh, there's a space. Okay, so let's get rid of that space. That allows my match function to work. All right, we'll copy it down here. All right, what's up here? Is there a space? No space. Okay, so here we have a dash. Here we have a slash. All right, so to make life easier, friend, these uh, headings here should match to the headings on sheet two, but they don't, and that's okay. They don't have to. There's, it's not like we have a million of these. We can just kind of go through here and see that. Hey, we're getting this from uh, C three. C is the third column, so I'll put a three there. Uh, here we're getting the value from D3, that's the fourth column, I'll put a 4 here. Uh, and then E3, I'll put a 5 because E is the fifth column, sixth column, G is the seventh column, H is the eighth column, and then J, the tenth column. So I don't know what happened to whatever was in column 9, but uh, for whatever reason, this is what Fred wants to pull back. Uh, so we now know the row number up here and the column number. Now that we know that, a uh, great little uh, function called index, equal index. Uh, we're going to give it an array of answers. I'll come back to that in a second. And then specify what row number. All right, the row number is up here in B2. I always want to grab the row number from B2, so I'm going to press F4 there to put the dollar sign B, dollar sign 2, comma, and then which column number. That's the number directly to the right of me, closing parentheses. All right, answers. Boy, we could use a named range and just leave answers there, uh, but I'm not going to complicate things right now. Um, therefore, the array, I'm going to click back to sheet 2. I'm going to start up here in A1, choose all of my columns over to J. From this point, control shift down arrow. In case Fred wants to add items later, I'm going to add another 
I don't know, 20 or so rows. Uh, and let's see, we have to make sure that that is locked down with the dollar signs. So I'll press F4 right there. Make sure that we get four dollar signs. If uh, you would have typed this instead of selecting with the mouse or the arrow keys, it tends to only put the dollar signs in the last part. All right, so there we go. There's our 120 volts. Once we have that formula, we can just copy the formula. That's why I use those dollar signs. We don't have to retype the formula in each one. And now, select a different item from the list and everything updates. All right, now, column B is ugly. We have these helper cells that we don't want to see. Fred had a copyrighted picture here. Um, if Fred drags that over on top of column B and extends it a little bit, no one will see those answers in column B. That's solution number one. Solution number two uh, is to take everything in B, cut it, and move it over to column Z where no one will see it. Solution number three is just hide column B. So right click and choose hide and no one will see those. You have your picture here with the diagram. Um, you choose from the list and uh, everything will update. All right, so uh, this was tougher because we had to use the helper function, the match function here, the index function. Those are confusing functions. Those are functions that people don't run into a lot, um, but they certainly make it easier to go grab the selected record from the other sheet and bring all of those answers back. Oh, hey, I want to thank Fred for sending that question in, and I want to thank you for stopping by. See you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel. All right. Hey, if this was a dueling podcast, this is really what I would do. I would get rid of the blank row 2. I would make sure that all of the headings here matched the values back on sheet 1. I would select this whole range and click up here in the name box and name that data. And then finally, control T so that way as I add new records to the bottom, uh, the name data automatically updates. Then, back here on sheet 1, um, the formula says we're going to take the index of data, the named range, which row do we want? We want the match of A2 in column A, comma 0. That's kind of like what we did in the podcast. And then which column do we want? We want the match of the value just above us in row 1. That'll tell us where the uh, where it falls in the column. Copy that formula down. Now we don't have anything in column B. And a much more robust solution because as we add new data to the bottom of sheet 2, it will automatically uh, in be incorporated in all these formulas. We don't have to worry about hiding column B. Everything just lives. Yes, we are doing uh, seven or eight matches instead of one match here, but it's only seven or eight. It's not like we're doing 10,000 of these, and it's only into a table of 56 rows or 55 rows. So the performance hit isn't going to be that bad.